there is a word this afternoon. It's found recorded in the first Samuel chapter number 15. passage, it speaks to how important it is for us to do whatever Jesus says do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in order for us to live a blessed life, we must do whatever Jesus says for us to do. Uh, but brothers and sisters, we also have to remember uh, that it is necessary for us to do whatever God the Father says for us to do. Uh, the difference being that that Jesus came and he said, I, I've come that you might have life yeah, yeah. and might have life more abundantly. Right. Uh, he, he came to, to, to shower us uh, with blessings of grace and mercy yeah. that will allow us access to the Father. Yeah. But the Father also says, do whatever I say. Yeah. Uh, his voice comes a little bit harsher. Uh, he, he speaks uh, not that as, as, as one who is going to uh, oversee blessings, but the one who also oversees curses. Yes. Uh, because uh, his words, uh, brothers and sisters, he, 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 he cuts it right to the chase. Um, uh, um, Jesus gives us grace and mercy. Yes. Uh, Jesus gives us access to the Father, but the Father's a little bit harder. Uh, than Jesus is. Uh, he, he says, here you do this, period. Uh, and when he tells us to do something, it is important that we do exactly what God says do. It's important here because we like to think that the only way we can sin is if we break one of the Ten Commandments. Uh, but God will tell us to do something, not do something, say something, not say something through his spirit and expects us to obey exactly what he says. Uh, have you ever, have you ever, have, 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 has the spirit ever told you, uh, don't go down that street? Uh, but you went down anyway and you found yourself running into a brick wall where he was trying to warn you not to go down that spot. And if you only do what God says, we would not have some of the problems that we have. Uh, but what we do is, is, is we, uh, we, we want to do uh, what we want to do and want God to accept our limitations. We, 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 we want to say, Lord, you know I'm a sinner as an excuse. God says, I, I, I don't take excuses. Uh, Brother Preacher, I remember I shared the story that uh, once one Wednesday night I decided I was going to skip Bible class. So I go play some basketball. And uh, I'm out there doing my, you know, my thing, my back down, turn around, jump up. You know, the, the, the sweet finger roll. I'm out there doing my thing, and lo and behold, I came down on somebody's ankle. And, and, and or somebody's foot and twisted my ankle. Now I'm out of commission for about a week. I'm 
I'm, I'm, I'm icing it down and, and, and just to show you how dumb I am, two weeks later, I decide I'm going to play basketball instead of going to prayer meeting and Bible class. And I'm right back out there backing them down, shooting the turnaround jumper, and finger rolling and came down on somebody else's foot and twisted my ankle again. Now this time, because it was not fully healed, it took a little bit longer uh, for it to heal. And uh, I guess it's about a month later, God called and said, hey man, we hooping again tonight. I said, y'all gonna have to find somebody else. Uh, because I ain't going to keep bumping my head up against the wall when God tells me, don't go play ball and put anything before me. And if you do so, you go out there and hurt yourself, guess what? I told you not to do it. Yes. It's plain uh, that, 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 that God will speak to us and tell us, don't do that. Uh, but if we do it, uh, don't poke your lip out when something bad happens in the process. Uh, you find people like to, to say, well, that's not really what God said. Uh, we do that so that we can have a, 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 a back door to escape uh, what God truly said. Uh, the reason why a lot of folks like to to stay home from church is because uh, somebody told him you don't have to go to church uh, to be saved. And you don't. But the Bible also says don't forsake the assembly of the people. That, that you need to go because you get power when you go to church. But, but they'll stay home and come up with a reason. And God says if you, if, if you don't get all that you have coming, it's because you didn't do what I said do. Uh, when you get to heaven, so my God take us around and open up this big old door with all types of blessings and, and gifts and, and all this good stuff and he says this is the stuff you would have got had you done what I asked you to do uh, but it's still sitting up here in the closet because you were disobedient to my word walk with me through the text. Saul is king of Israel. He was chosen by God to be king over his people. He was blessed uh, with strength and stamina. He had the, the look of a king. Yeah. He looked real good. Uh, he walked upright. He, if you saw him, you would say, this person here looks like a king yeah. on the outside. Uh, but on the inside, he was far from a kingly. Uh, he, he, he didn't always do what God said do. He didn't have the heart for God's people. And because of his lack of understanding, he fell short of God's glory. The prophet came and told him that God has decided to wipe out all the Amalekites from the face of the earth. And he tells him that, that you are going to be the vessel to which God orchestrates this command. God tells him to go and destroy everything that belongs to them. Uh, destroy it and completely wipe it out. And if you remember, brothers and sisters, the Amalekites represent sin. Uh, they, they, they are a sinful nation. And anytime God is dealing with them, God is dealing with a situation where God is saying, get sin out of your life. 
I need you to remove out of your life that sin that so easily besets you. I, I need you to completely remove it from the face of the earth. And in the, the process of this, uh, Samuel, uh, he begins to smell himself. I mean, if you, if you understand, Samuel decided that he's going to go and, and wipe these folks out according to the word of God. But if you see here, he took with him an abundance amount of people for the task. Uh, he didn't need all the people that he took with him. Uh, but he decided that he was going to make sure he was going to fulfill the, the, the assignment that God placed before him. Now watch this. Uh, because uh, Samuel uh, decides that he's going to take these extra folks to, to do what God says do. is already letting us know that this is not about the end in a good story. Uh, because uh, why do you rely on the people if God told you uh, to go and take them out? Uh, he told you that, that you would be successful uh, that you can go and wipe these folks out and, and, and that the war is going to end in your favor. Uh, so, so Sister Jackie, if that was me, I guess all I really need is just us five right here. Uh, we can go handle this because God is on our side. Uh, because God is going to fight our battle. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of folks. Uh, but what he was doing is it was he was trying to establish his own greatness. Uh, and the first thing that we'll, we'll get uh, when we start trying to do the opposite of God is, is when we have arrogance and pride. The Bible says pride uh, comes before the fall. Yes. Uh, you, you, you start thinking that it is me that is accomplishing what I'm accomplishing. Brother Samuel is, is, is trying to get Saul to understand that it don't take all that. Uh, you just need to do whatever he says do. Saul yeah, yeah. so here goes in and, and starts wiping out all the folks but decides that he's going to keep uh, that which looks desirable to the eyes. Uh, Brother Preacher, you know uh, sin does sometimes look good. Uh, it, it sometimes looks like the world is having more fun uh, than Christians. It, it looks like they're living better. It looks like their cars are shinier. It looks like they eat from the choice hog. It just appears that that, uh, that sin looks better uh, than it does. It, 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 it appeals to common senses uh, the way that it appears to us. Uh, uh, you see, if, if if, 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 if the enemy wants to try to uh, hook something up, yeah. uh, he ain't going to bring something that don't look good to you. Yeah. Uh, he, he knows I ain't attracted to overweight women, so <laughs> he ain't going to bring Big Bertha in here <laughs> to try to entice me. Uh, he, he knows he's going to have to hook Holly Berry up real good. He, he's going to have to shine that nickel up real good if you want to catch my eye. Right, right. <laughs> Brother Saul had uh, some things catch his eye. Uh -huh. uh, he said that he, he kept the best pieces. Yeah. Uh, things that God said to destroy, he decided I'm going to keep, but yet he destroyed that which was ugly. Yes. He destroyed that which was weak, mm -hmm. inferior. Uh, he decided that those things uh, he would destroy. And one point I want to make to you folks is to understand that, that not everything in the world is a sin. Yes. It's only a sin if God said, don't do it. Yes. Uh, it's nothing wrong if you want to go out and go dancing and, and shake a rug and, and have a good time. Unless God said, don't go. 
If he says don't go when you go, then you did wrong, then you sin. But if he didn't say don't go, it's okay to go out and go. It's when God says don't do it that it begins to come sin. Brother Preach, you know I love me some Piccadilly, some faces. It's a lot of a lot of good time in the club, but 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 when God said don't go, that means uh, don't go. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't go. He's saying that I can't go. Uh, when he told me that it's time for you to come out from amongst me, uh, he, he told me you cannot longer do that anymore. Uh, you can still dance, but you're going to have to change your partner. Made it clear. And that was the, the hardest thing I remember. <laughs> Preacher, we were standing in my living room when I first told you God told called me to preach. Yeah. And the biggest thing I was thinking is, Lord, you're about to ask me to give some stuff up. <laughs> that looks good to me. Yeah. God said that's exactly right. Yeah. Some things oh, you're gonna have to destroy. Yeah. Completely. Well, Wipe it completely out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because if you live this much left, mm -hmm. it's all coming back. Yeah. If you just live a morsel of it, it's all coming back. Yeah. Brother Saul thinks he can, he can play games with God. Yeah. He thinks that uh, he can get around God. But the ironic thing is, it's customary that if you was to go to war and win the war, to take the splendor home. Yeah. That was customary. Yeah. Man, y'all won the war, man, take all that stuff. All that stuff is y'all now. It all belongs to you, so you can have all of it. But when God says, don't do it, it becomes then sin. Yeah. Don't bring none of that stuff back. But it looks good to him. You know, it's easy to give up the small things in our lives. But what about that which we hold dear? That which we find precious. That which we find gives us our most joy. Can we give that up if God says, give it up? I can give up drinking. I don't like to drink anyway. <laughs> but can you give up the weed? <laughs> well, I give up drinking. What we, what we do is, is, is we, we're telling what we did do uh -huh. instead of what we didn't do. Uh -huh. He had a conversation and saw Samuel having a conversation. And Saul begins to tell him what he did right. I did all this that the Lord asked. We won the war. Uh, I did it all the right way. And the prophet says, what's the sheep then that I hear in the background? Uh, what's all these cows back there moving? If you did what God said do, what is all these sounds that's, that I'm hearing? And he begins to try to tell him how he was going to make a sacrifice uh -huh. unto the Lord. Right, right. Uh, but, uh, why do we try to uh, impress upon God what we did instead of impressing upon God what we didn't do? Uh -huh. yes. Have you ever heard somebody uh, start trying to have an argument of why they think they should get some stuff? They say, Lord, I don't chase women. Lord, I don't cuss. Uh, Lord, I pay my tithes. Lord, I give to the poor. Uh, Lord, I do all these things. Lord, then why can't I get what I'm asking for? And the Lord said, I got a longer list of the things that you do do while you come tell me about the things that you don't do. You don't do five things, but you do do 5,000 things. Why are you trying to tell me the things that you do when you ain't got a laundry list of things that you don't do? God said, I, 
I saw where you was at last night. Why are you telling me what you did today? Yeah. Yeah. Makes it clear. Samuel tells him, I understand how hard it is uh, to go and do something uh, that God tells you to do that's a difficult assignment. Right, right. Uh, because when God told me to come and talk to you, just to tell you it was going to be king, I was nervous. Yes. Uh, I, I, I didn't know what was going to transpire. Right. Uh, when he told me to, uh, to, 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 to be a prophet, I was, I was nervous. Yeah. I, I knew that all the time that I would tell somebody, uh, it was not always going to be received the right way. Uh, but just like uh, how we had to do preaching, we just have to tell it regardless of whether they'll accept it yeah. or not. Yeah. And, and you can't be scared yeah. about what's going to happen when you do tell it. Yeah. Uh, because I have a 10,000 angels that surround me. Come on, come on. Uh, that when I say what God says to me to say that, that you can't do me any harm. Yeah. You just have to do whatever he says do. Yeah. Andrew didn't quite get it. And the troubling thing is, is, is that the Bible said it, it, it remorse God that he ever made Saul king. Yeah. Sister Jackie, can't nothing hurt you more wow. than for God to say, man, it, it, it vests my spirit yeah. that I even appointed you king yeah. over my people. You see, God entrusts us with certain assignments. Yeah. And when we don't fulfill the assignment that God has entrusted us with, it hurts God to the core because he made you for your assignment. You was created for this assignment. You was groomed for this assignment. You was chosen for such an assignment. God said, man, I, it hurt me. That I even let him become king. Oh, the conversation had to get a little bit dicey there. As Samuel, seeing that he made a big mistake, he found out that you can't buy your way into glory. He found out that no matter how many sacrifices you make, mm -hmm. God would rather you just do what I said do yes. than to make a sacrifice. God is not pleased with sacrifices that don't even come from the heart. Yes. What's a sacrifice if it didn't cost him anything? Mm -hmm. All you did was went out and destroyed some folks and came back with some splendor. But guess what? That was already mine. When I told you to wipe them out, that's all I wanted you to do was wipe them out. And it is better if you just do what God says do than to try to buy favor with God. Uh, don't try to reason with the Lord. Just merely do whatever God says for you to do. And it's important uh, brothers and sisters, that we realize uh, that God uh, don't care about your sacrifices. Yes. God cares about your obedience. Yes. The obedience makes the sacrifice acceptable. Yes. Uh, if you don't have the right obedience, the sacrifice is not even accepted. Uh, so if you come giving unto God a sacrifice, but not being obedient to what God said, do God said, I'm not even accepting the sacrifice. Yeah. So, so not only is he not giving you credit for the obedience, he's also not giving you credit for the sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you want to, you want to try to, you want to try to trick him. But God can't be tricked. Yes. Because God, when he begins to count it all up, mm -hmm. the first thing he looks at 
is if you're going to do what I said do. Yeah. And I'm glad this morning that God gives us a prime example yeah. of being obedient even unto death. Yeah. It's important that if we're going to follow the word of God, yeah. that we follow it from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. That we believe the beginning all the way yeah. to the end. Yeah. That we're going to have to be obedient to the word and the will of God. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever God is placing your spirit to do, God said it's time for you to start doing it. Yeah. I don't need you to chuck and job or play around with this game. Mm -hmm. I just need somebody to say, here I am, Lord, yeah. send me. Yeah. I need somebody that's going to be fully committed and fully persuaded to do the will of the Father. Well, and I know a man that over 2,000 years ago decided that he was going to be obedient to his daddy. Yeah, he yeah. decided that come what may, he won't be sidetracked yeah. and he's going to do exactly what his daddy told him to do. Is there anybody in here that knows a man who was one time crying in the garden of Gethsemane? He was trying to get out of doing what he knew he had to do. He prayed all night, asking the Lord, if you can, let this cup pass me by. And he kept on praying, and he kept on seeking a word from the Lord. And the Bible says that he found out that God said you're going to have to do it all by yourself. Keep on sleeping, saints. I've got the word from the Lord. And not my will, but thy will be done. I'm going to be obedient to the words of my Father. I'm going to go on and let them spit on me. I'm going to let them talk about me. I'm going to let them put a crown on my head. I'm going to let them put a old robe on my back. But I'm going to be obedient to the words of my daddy. I'm going to let them make me drag this cross all the way up this hill. I'm going to let them stick this cross in the ground. I'm going to let them put spears in my side. I'm going to let them mock my name because I'm going to be obedient to the will of my daddy. I'm going to let them talk about me while they're on the ground. I'm going to let Pilate say, go ahead and give them on up. I'm going to let the people yell, crucify me because I'm going to be obedient to the will of my father. I'm going to let them go on and kill me because I'm going to lay my life down for my friend. But guess what, brothers and sisters? All I was doing was being obedient to the will of my father. And because of me being obedient, he accepted my sacrifice of my body for your sins. He's going to accept my sacrifice in your place. But three days later, when he got out of that